Okay, the thing you're about to see is a supersonic ping pong ball gun. Um, it was developed from a subsonic uh, gun that's been in the literature for quite a while. And after uh, building and wearing out three or four of the subsonic ones, um, I figured out a way to make a change to it to make it supersonic. And so now we're getting speeds around Mach 1.2, 1.25. The old one would shoot through uh, maybe two empty pop cans. This one will shoot through five. It'll shoot through the ping pong paddle. Um, it'll shoot through half inch furniture plywood with no problem. This thing doesn't have any real practical use that I know of. It's a teaching tool. And what it's able to do is get students interested in what are some pretty subtle physics. And since it's so dramatic and so easy to connect with, they want to learn more. So that's the, uh, that creates the teaching opportunity to go in and start interesting people in physics. There's two sections on this. There's a clear barrel that has a vacuum in it, and behind that there's a nozzle, and behind that there's a compressed air cylinder, basically, a pressure plenum. And the idea is that ping pong balls don't go very fast in the air because of air resistance. Well, if there's no air, the very low mass, so if you can get a reasonable amount of force on a ping pong ball, you can get really high accelerations. And so the subsonic one just uses atmospheric air rushing in the end of the tube after you puncture the little tape diaphragm at the end. The supersonic one, instead of venting atmospheric air, it pre vents pressurized air, and it does it through a convergent divergent nozzle. And our betting right now is that gives us supersonic flow downstream of the nozzle, just like it does in rocket engines, uh, jet fighter engines, steam turbine nozzles. They all use the same kind of nozzle, same kind of physics. This is just a standard uh, com air compressor like you'd use for power tools. In fact, that's what it's designed for. This one happens to be Porter Cable, but there's a couple of different brands we use. The reason we use these is that the air, the, the, the high pressure air that's plumbed through the building only goes to about 90 or 95 PSI. And we can go over 110 or 120 with this. This is a pressure tank. This is made out of aluminum uh, pipe that's been uh, TIG welded onto this fitting here. There's another fitting, and this, this can right here has the nozzle in it. The nozzle is 3D printed to a very specific shape. And right in between them, there's a, a what we call a burst disc. This is a lasered multi-layer burst disc that Raj designed. And that goes right in here, and it's got the cutouts in it for the bolts that hold all this thing, this thing together. We've got so many bolts on it because with 125 or 150 PSI, if you figure that over the cross-sectional area of the gap here, that's actually a lot of force. So we have to be able to resist that with these bolts. The convergent divergent nozzle lives inside this big aluminum can. And then this is the uh, clear barrel. This, this has a vacuum in it when this has a pressure in it. And the, the difference between the two is maintained by that burst disc. When the pressure gets too high, the burst disc fails lets the high pressure air through the nozzle and into the vacuum. The ball will be about here, okay, and it just shoots the ball down the barrel. There's a, there's a tape seal at the other end, and what happens is the, the ball doesn't fit really tightly into the barrel, a little puff of air gets past the ball as it's going down the barrel. And so when the ball gets to the end, the, that little puff of air gets there first and blows the tape out of the way. So with high-speed video, we can watch the tape on the, on the muzzle end uh, bulge out like that, blow out of the way, just in time for the ball to come out. The, the, the physics are pretty cool. When you're working with the subsonic gun, we're venting atmospheric air into a vacuum. So there's about a 14.7 psi pressure differential across the ball. And when you do, when you use that, uh, just as, as your uh, pressurized air source, you're getting about 5,000 g. So the barrel, the ball is in the barrel for a few milliseconds, accelerates down the barrel, and then when it comes out the other end, uh, you're looking at muzzle velocities. It's pretty variable in the neighborhood of six, seven hundred feet a second, something like that. It's not real repeatable from shot to shot. When you put the pressurized plenum behind it and the vacuum, or the uh, convergent divergent nozzle, um, we're looking at 100 to 125 psi in the pressure chamber. And then it goes through this nozzle and the, our, the bedding right now is it comes out of that nozzle supersonic. 
it's uh, the when you when you look at normal subsonic flow, you assume it's incompressible. Well, the pressures and the velocities, the pressure gradients are so high in this gun, we have to assume it's it's a compressible air now. It follows basically a different set of rules than incompressible air does. And we're getting muzzle velocities in the neighborhood of Mach 1.2, 1.25, which is, uh, let's see, that's going to be 1,200 or so feet a second, maybe 1,300 feet a second. 